This report tells you the best way to earn passive income with crypto staking. I've been working on this report for a few weeks now because there's a problem. There are just too many options. There are far too many sites and coins to stake, and there's no one resource that gives the full picture. So I've taken matters into my own hands. Let's rank the top centralized and decentralized methods to stake your crypto because this matters. And let me show you why. Let's say you wanted to stake Cosmos. If you were to stake $1,000 of Cosmos on Coinbase at their rate of 5%, this is what your returns would look like after five years if there was no price change. Total value of $1,276. If you were to stake Cosmos natively, meaning not through an exchange, at the current rate of 12.49%, your ending balance after five years would be $1,801. 190% more gains by doing nothing but just staking your crypto somewhere else. There's nothing I hate more than a missed opportunity, and all I want for you is more gains. So just watch this video. That's why I made it. So staking. Staking is the method in which a proof of stake cryptocurrency validates transactions on its ledger. It's not unlike mining a crypto like Bitcoin, except where Bitcoin uses physical constraints like electricity or expensive hardware to ensure that there's no fraudulent transactions. A proof of stake crypto uses your assets as a kind of show of good faith to help keep the system running properly. Staking your crypto is about as risk-free as passive income gets because you're not actually sending it anywhere and no one is borrowing it. Your biggest risk with staking is your own human error, like losing a password. Try password. Nope. Try zero, 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 zero. In my opinion though, staking is best for cryptos that you already plan to hold long-term anyways. If this is the case, staking is a no-brainer. You just simply make more money. If you're a short-term holder, this is where you could run into some more volatility risks with staking, and you may wanna consider your strategy. Now let's talk about some of the top options on the web for staking, starting with centralized exchanges. If you're a Coinbase user, you can actually stake right on the platform. However, staking options are a little bit limited. Coinbase allows staking for Cosmos, Tezos, Ethereum, and Algorand. Each earns between four and 5% APY, which doesn't sound bad until you look at what those coins earn natively. Ethereum 2 and Tezos aren't bad at all. We can see their native staking rewards after fees really aren't far from what Coinbase offers. Algorand is actually great on Coinbase. They offer 4% on Coinbase, which is more than you would likely get natively at 2.53%. Cosmos, on the other hand, Coinbase's rates are terrible. Natively, Cosmos pays 12.5% staking rewards, Coinbase is 5%. And this isn't just the case for Coinbase. You'll notice that staking rewards on major platforms are almost random. Outside of Coinbase, you start to see better yields though, and an interesting example of this is CEX.io. You have a much wider selection of tokens for staking, most notably MetaHash, which can be staked at 14% APY. Now, this may be the first time that you've ever heard about MetaHash, and this would be because it's quite small. And you'll notice this trend as well. Certain exchanges will offer a few tiny altcoins on their platforms for staking that have massive rewards. These may be a good deal, but remember that you still have volatility risk when staking. If MetaHash goes down 14%, you just lost one year's worth of rewards. So just be careful and don't just hop into a project because it has high staking rewards. Now beyond this, CEX.io has some pretty good rewards for a few popular projects as well. Rewards for Solana and Tezos are competitive with native rates, which is really important. Polkadot and Polygon aren't terrible either. Cosmos and Cardano are two that I would personally avoid on this platform. Now let's move on to Kraken. Kraken is definitely one of the better options for staking, especially for Polkadot, Solana, and Ethereum 2, where yields aren't too far off from native rates. However, Kava clearly stands out here at 20%. This appears to be right on par with Kava's native staking rates. Kraken is also one of the better exchanges for Cardano at 4% compared to around 5% if you stake natively through somewhere like my Cardano stake pool, which I'll have linked down in the description below. Kraken's rates for Kusama are in okay territory compared to native rates, and Cosmos is pretty bad compared to what you can get elsewhere. All right, now we have KuCoin. I'm a fan of KuCoin for a lot of things, but not so much when it comes to staking. Sorry, KuCoin. The rates just just aren't good. <laughs> I will say that they do have a cool feature called soft staking that lowers the requirement to lock up your tokens for so long, but 
get up those rates, KuCoin. <laughs> I want to stake here, but the rates aren't good. The highest APY staking on KuCoin is Hydra at 56%, which is crazy high. However, this is another one of those small cap cryptos. So you have some more volatility risk built into investing in that coin. Then we have Persistence with a 28% yield, but beyond that, rates aren't amazing. By the way, if you appreciate my research and deep dive here, just please consider tapping that subscribe button. It would mean a lot to me. Now let's look at Binance Lock Staking, which works a little bit differently from Binance DeFi, which we'll cover in a minute. My data here looks at the percentage yield over the last 30 days. So the yearly results might be slightly different and that could be the case for really any token discussed today. They aren't like set firm rates in many cases. As you can see, the AXS token for Axie Infinity takes the top spot here with staking rewards of over 105%. And that's why I'm investing $250 because what could go wrong? I'm only 60 days away from buying my second Lambo. Outside of the wild world of DAOs, this is about the highest yield you'll see for large cap crypto staking. If you hold AXS or play the game, you're really losing out by not staking this coin. Beyond Axie, we have high APR figures for Binary X, which is another play to earn game token. This game was developed directly on Binance Smart Chain, so it stands to reason that Binance would offer some of the best staking rewards. From here, you can see many other tokens on Binance as well for huge 20 to 45 percent APRs like ADEX, PancakeSwap, and many, many more. Beyond this, Binance has many more stakeable coins, including competitive rates for Cardano and Solana, and they might have the largest number of options to stake in general. It's really not a bad choice among the centralized options. One more platform that I came across in my research, though, is called My Container. They appear to be a smaller startup in this space, but the usability looks quite good, and here are some of the top staking rates that they offer. Now, so far, we've covered some of the higher yield staking options through centralized exchanges. Now we need to cover DeFi. With DeFi, you're going to see better rates. However, usability is definitely lower. You need to be sure to keep your personal wallet safe. There is no customer service to call if you run into issues. So you have to be a little bit more tech savvy, but you make more money. So let's cover a few options, starting with Binance, who has launched their DeFi staking, which is kind of an attempt to bridge between centralized and decentralized staking. Here's a snapshot of the top performing tokens on the platform. The Kava Lend Hard Token and Venus Token take the top two positions right now at 10% and 7% respectively. While the numbers for Bitcoin, Ethereum, and BNB don't look much better than what we can get elsewhere. Now we can't cover DeFi staking without talking about PancakeSwap, the most popular decentralized platform in the galaxy, as they call themselves. I compiled all of the syrup pools into this chart arranged according to yield. And at the time that I took this data snapshot, the highest APY was for XCarnival, who is an aggregator of metaverse assets at just over 80% APY. Close runners up for pools are DKT and DAR at 79% APY. Both of those tokens are used in play to earn games. However, they don't seem to have the same kind of support that a game like Axie Infinity commands. So the risks here cannot be understated. They are high risk investments. Now you can also go with a more popular option and stake PancakeSwap's very own cake token in their auto cake pool, whose APY is currently at 66%. This is one of the highest yielding larger cap cryptos that you can possibly stake. Now there are far more exchanges in tokens to stake than I could possibly fit in one video. If you want to download the PDF of this report, it will be available on my Patreon. There you'll also get buy alerts, weekly coaching, bonus content, and a whole lot more. It really is an amazing deal that I'm quite proud of. Now, here's a comparison of some of the highest yielding cryptos from as high as 120% APY from staking. And you might be wondering, how is this even possible long term? Or how is this sustainable? And the answer is, it's not. Inflation would be way too high long term to keep those rates up for multiple years. Many altcoins will have temporarily high yields in order to attract investors, but this doesn't necessarily mean that they're a scam. The best way to think about this is it's another form of airdropping coins. They're rewarding people who hold their token through these very high APYs. But this also doesn't mean that you should just go ahead and ape your life savings into a project like this just because the yields are high. Another chart that we put together is the top 25 cryptos by total dollar amount staked. This might be helpful if you're looking for additional long-term holds to add to your portfolio of stakeable coins and passive income. Now, there are caveats here as well. 
there's, there's always caveats in crypto, I swear. <laughs> you might look at this list and see something like Polkadot with nearly 14% native staking rewards. And you might think, well, why don't I just put all of my money into DOT and retire on the 14% returns? Boom, done. Well, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but you also need to consider coin emissions as well when determining true staking rewards. So here we can see that even though the yield is nearly 14%, we need to account for 8.4% network inflation. So this gives us net staking rewards of around 5.6%, which isn't bad, but that's far from 14%. And this is the case for most cryptos. Solana and Cardano's net rewards after inflation are around 1% annually. Ethereum 2 isn't quite bad, at least currently, at 4.6% net. So let's summarize this. Staking is best if you already plan to hold a crypto long-term anyways. If that's the case, it's a no-brainer to stake and earn more money. The best staking platform really depends on the crypto that you're looking to stake and how internet savvy you are. Centralized exchanges like Coinbase or Binance are going to offer you the easiest experience to get your coins staked, so you can just go ahead and forget about them. But as we can see, these exchanges pretty much all take very high fees with very few exceptions. On the other hand, decentralized staking, which is basically going right to the source, is going to get you the best yields possible, but it's far more work. So here's an example. My Cardano stake pool. You need to either have a Yoroi or Daedalus wallet to hold your Cardano outside of an exchange. And then once it's there, you can then delegate your ADA right to my pool, ticker symbol max one. So it's a bit of work, but it gives you about one to 3% more yield than centralized exchanges do. I'll have a video in the description of this video with more information on it if you're interested. But the unfortunate part is literally every crypto has its own methods for staking natively in order to get the best rewards. Really, an all-around better solution is needed, which I am deeply thinking about just building myself. If you'd be interested in that, I'll have an email list in the description of this video where you can be notified with updates. But until then, at this point, you'll have to make the decision between user-friendly or better returns on your staking. But if you use this video as a guide, you should be able to find the best option possible out there for you. From here, I recommend checking out BlockFi. There you can make money on mini cryptos and stable coins, not by staking, but instead by lending them out. They also have a crypto credit card where you can use it as a normal credit card, except you get paid cash back rewards in Bitcoin. It's pretty freaking neat. And I'll have them linked in the description below. I would like to thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a profitable day.